All right, good morning. So Dragon Slayer, I finished my dungeon creation. Uh, so as you can see, I took the rooms and I placed all the rooms and then I drew passages to all the rooms Then I blacked out all the space so I would be able to see clearly the passages. Uh, of course, I numbered the rooms based on how I rolled the rooms uh, in order, of course. So uh, as you had seen in the last video when I was first setting this, uh, in order, but I placed the rooms around kind of where they made sense to me, connected the dots. Um, I took liberty to add a couple of secret passages in here as well, plus I have a final, it's, it's a room, but it's not actually a labeled room, where the stairwell would be going down to level two. This is where they could descend if I make a, a second, right? Okay, then uh, I went through and determined all the rooms. So I'll give you a walk you through this dungeon. So the entrance door is wooden and locked. Uh, that's going to be at the top of the stairs going down into the entrance. They're going to have to, um, of course, pick that lock. Or because it is a wooden uh, door, there are rules for breaching a wooden door, but you got to have tools generally. So I, I wouldn't. I would allow them to hack a door open if they a wooden door open if they needed to. Um. In the center of this room, the statue of a half woman, half goat stands eight feet tall. This is this evil goddess uh, statue. I rolled this up, evil goddess statue, and I made it of the green maiden fawn. Um, that's why it's half woman, half goat. So it's this evil statue, uh, evil goddess statue. Its hands raised, fingers spread wide as if to be reaching out for the viewer or for that person standing in front of it. Um, in the passage, the, the West Passage leading out of this room is gray ooze. It lay in wait on what appears to be, again, a greasy, oily floor. And it, of course, will attack if they get, if they trigger, if they give it in. And, of course, it surprises on a 1 to 4. As they would walk, if they would head west out of this passage, uh, 1 to 4, it, they wouldn't realize they've stepped in it until it's too late. This is a first room. Again, I rolled this up on the last video with treasure, with monster, with unique item. So this is a very, very dangerous entrance, though there's a good chance um, they could lose equipment or die here. Uh, 19 hit points. Armor class is a easy to hit. However, you can't, anything you hit it with, if it's, if it's made of iron or steel, is going to ultimately be devoured by the acid in one turn or two turns, whatever it is. So this very first entrance is going to be, in and of itself, a challenge. If they head west, certainly. Uh, if they head north or they head east, then no sweat, right? Or if they're not surprised by it, you know, if I happen to roll, that's five or six. Gray use. Uh, there is a moonstone. The treasure in here is a moonstone gem. I, uh, I have set it in the statue's forehead. So this green maiden, eight-foot tall statue in the center of the room, in the center of its forehead, is a gem. And, of course, I rolled monster with trap and treasure. It is trapped. Uh, that trap is a missile, and again, these are all rolled up, right? This is all determined randomly. Uh, the missile is a crossbow bolt, does 1d6 damage. It fires from the southeast corner, okay? So I placed a crossbow basically hidden in the wall that would fire a bolt, you know, at anyone who would reach up there to grab that gem. It would be, it would be angled to fire right into the back of anybody standing up to pull that gem out of the forehead. And that's room, that's the entrance. So it's going to start in a pretty pretty fantastic way. It's worth 200 gold is this Moonstone Gym. Room 2, which is actually here, right? Again, they'll probably discover or try Room 11 or head down the hall. They could get to Room 2 if they head down the hall and boom, right? But Room 2 is here, so it's not in order, right? If they head over here, then it would be the last room on my list. But Room 2 is here. It's locked. It's trapped. It's a wood door. So again, if they can't pick the lock, I would allow them to hack the door in. But of course that makes noise and they're not going to be able to surprise anything that would be on the other side on that. Or if there's a wandering monster roll in here, they wouldn't be able to surprise anything with that kind of noise. This room is empty. There is a secret passage hidden on the southwest wall. Uh, so right here, matter of fact, I'm sorry, they can't go up here and go uh, right because it's a secret. Well, they could and then they, if they inspected that wall, they could find the secret passage. The only other way to get to two would be to go east out of this room past room 11, up and around the corner. Then they would come to this locked wooden door. In this room is nothing, uh, uh, except there is a secret passage. There is a magical glyph that's warding 
the door. Uh, uh, excuse me, the secret passage. So if they discovered the secret passage, they could trip a uh, trap, a ma which is a glyph of warding, which is basically going to kill any of them. It's a, it's a 16 damage. They can save for half of that. So, And by the way, it's not a 2d8 roll. It's 16 damage. So uh, if they save uh, versus the warding, they would take 8 points of damage. So uh, it's very, very dangerous. However, because it's a secret door... Um, but here's the thing, they could find the secret door on this side, which would be, or they could find the secret door on the other side, so they could potentially discover the secret door on either side and suffer the, the trap. So again, already the first two rooms prove that this may be a short dungeon crawl. All right, room three, again, this is all randomly rolled up, and then I try to make sense, and I will, uh, I will of course, imbibe the atmosphere and the theme as they travel through and they inspect the rooms. Uh, the third room, which is way over here, again, they could come up, around, down, around, and find this door here, right? Or they could go up and around and find this door here. It's door, it's wood, it's also locked, right? As you remember in the last video, I rolled up a lot of locked doors. In the far northwest corner is a chest with a gilded painted fawn figure on its top. So imagine in the far corner here lay a ch treasure chest, and on its top lid is this painted gilded figure of the same statue they would meet in the entrance of this evil goddess fawn. Half goat, half woman, right? Uh, the lid is trapped, right? Again, this is another one I rolled. I rolled treasure with trap. When it's open, spears uh, doing 1d6 damage will jut up from the floor. Uh, a dex check will half that damage. The chest contains 400 gold and copper coins. So I think that would be 4,000 uh, 4, copper coins. So it's 400 gold, but it's all in copper. So what a what a tragedy for the uh, group to find to suffer a trap, but to find 400 in value. But it's so there's so many coppers, you're gonna have to lug these things out, which is it's just I love it. I love the randomness of these dungeon generator. Four is way up here. So again, they can find this by traveling up this passage and around. Or again, they can come through it around here. So they, they kind of all snake around, can, can kind of run into each other, right? Four, it's a boarded up uh, wood door. So again, this was a sealed wood door. I just made the seal boarded up. So it's going to be like literally boarded up. It'll take them time to remove the boards and open the door, which would also make noise. Once again, whatever's inside, they're not going to surprise. And if there's wandering monsters, they would have trouble surprising them with a crowbar removing boarded up doors or hacking through it. This large room is empty. However, a lone table with a dead man sits clutching a potion. Uh, this is a potion of levitation, which, of course, they won't be able to determine unless they have a spell or something would let them figure it out. But they, it, he's clutching a, 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 a vial of a potion. A five, which is all the way on the opposite corner. It's over here, so this can be found by navigating through un- so all these sharp angled halls would be hewn in, in, in ground or, or granite or stone. They're clean. However, the, the passage out of the west is, 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 is rugged and carved through roughly. So it's really circumventing around. The rest of it looks like it had been occupied or is, is well developed. This one passage is rough and rough hewn. Okay, this leads to a, a, a chance to get to nine through a secret door. Uh, or it can come back around into the remainder of the, of, the, of the dungeon. But five is up here on the opposite corner of four. This door is boarded up as well. It's wooden. So again, they would have to pry this loose, chop it down. This chamber is carpeted uh, and tapestry hangs on the north wall of the fawn. So again, it'll be a tapestry of this evil goddess fawn hanging on the north wall. Um, uh, where am I at here? Uh, and lurking in here is a shadow uh, in waiting. It surprises on a 1 to 5, uh, and it's very dangerous. Uh, actually, only 5 hit points, so easy to kill. However, they can't harm it unless they have silver or magic. Web, uh, magic. So they would be in a battle with something easy to hit, but they can't actually harm. Not good. It only does 1 to 4 hit points, but it sucks. Every time it touches you, it sucks 1 point of strength, and that is accumulative. So if you're hit 3 or 4 times, you're going to lose up to 3 or 4 strength again. XP is also written here, right? And I usually put the page number so I can also go back and reference and make sure I get everything right. Right, there you go. Also, laying on the floor below the tapestry sits a decorative amphora, which is valued at 300 gold. So there's the treasure that's in this room, 
would sit on the floor beneath this tapestry hanging, okay? And then again, there's a shadow in this room that will surprise. Very, very dangerous, as all old-school dungeon crawling was, right? Okay. I didn't modify any of this based on the number of, of players, so we just play. We see what happens, right? Play to find out. Six is way over here, so again, five's here, six is back over here. Remember, I rolled a couple of these odd-shaped rooms, these kind of circular rooms. So I've got one here at nine, two, and six. Two, again, has nothing in it, but it's got that warded trap, which is incredibly dangerous. Well, six is here. A bronze sealed door, right, means you can you need a one. You can only get a one to open it. There are ways to hack it open, like a brick wall. So, again, there are rules for that if you have the proper tools, right? Unfortunately, on the other side of that, uh, we'll definitely be waiting for them if they have to hack this door open. A giant poisonous frog. Page 158. Also... Uh, uh, here will be a corpse that lay in the room, and uh, the only thing of value on that corpse will be a jade cloak clasp around the corpse's neck will be an old ratty cloak, but it has a beautiful jade clasp worth 200 gold. So again, we're collecting treasure if they can survive. All right, number seven. Seven is over here. Uh, seven is up here at the very top, the north. So you can almost go right through here and right to seven. Seven is a wood door. It's locked. A fresco of a ritual sacrifice adorns the west wall. So this entire west wall, right, will be this fresco of a, of a ritual sacrifice. Uh, and there is uh, literally nothing else of value in this room. So I'll describe what it might be like it was a, uh, might be like a, uh, uh, a dais at the end of this where it was like a, like a church. This would be like a temple room maybe and uh, a sacrifice room with a fresco of the sacrifice along this wall. There might be a dais where they would have sacrificed somebody. So I'll populate it live with my vision, uh, my imagination of what is in this room that complements it. But I wrote down the most important pieces. Eight, which we find down here. Again, this can this is going to be, you can come up and around here and find that door. You can go all the way up and around and down and find this door. So again, a lot of it is almost a maze. Everything, though, can be almost found from every direction. It's just how you go about it. Eight. Here is a wooden door again. This one is just closed, which means they're going to have to open this door. It might be swollen. They're going to have to pry it open or push it open. A secret door um, on the north wall. So all this room has is a secret door into a, a 10-foot hall that would go into 9, right? And there is no other way to get to 9, so it's a secret passage into 9, secret passage that would find the door into 9. So really, they're not going to be able to get into 9 unless they discover one of these two secret passages. So 8 only allows them to get into a room that would let them find a secret door. Okay, Nine is a wooden door ajar. That's here if they get to it through the secret passage. And it has six sturges waiting for them, and that's it. So it's very difficult to find and probably to get to. And unfortunately, if they do, they will be bombarded by sturges. And uh, there you have it. It's like, what, what, does it make logical sense? I don't care, right? It's dungeon crawling. We can say there's a hole in the roof where they fly out and do their thing. I don't care. Um, 10 uh, is uh, right here, right smack in the middle, so you can go right straight up in here and come around find this door. It is a bronze closed door. It's not sealed, it's just closed, so again, they would have to work to open this on a 1. The ceiling and the floor are partially collapsed in. For every turn that they investigate this room, there's a 1 in 2 chance that there's going to be further collapse. Either they'll fall through the second floor, or, or the ceiling will collapse in on them, doing 2 die 6 damage. So 10 here, very dangerous. And again, I'll, I'll decide what's in here and what it looks like, and if they want to investigate, etc., etc., for every turn they're in here, right? So I wouldn't just read this to them, or, you know, I mean, obviously I will, I will, I will have a theme of this. Uh, again, because of the statue, and because I made it my, or actually I rolled the evil goddess on the statue, I made it this green maiden of lore. So most of the theme for this is going to be like this had been uh, a lair of a cult that followed the Green Maiden or something, right? So it's just a theme. It's an atmosphere. Last but not least, right? Right here. As a matter of fact, they can get here. Uh, they come in here. They survive this. If they go east up here, there's a door. So they can get to 11 pretty much pretty quick in the game. It is a wood locked door. Three skeletons await inside. Uh, one of these skeletons wears the treasure. So again, I rolled a monster and a treasure here. So this, one of the skeletons will be wearing a gold circlet. That will be the treasure, and the gold circlet is worth 500 gold pieces. So they could actually score pretty fat gold in the entrance, and they could get another treasure here in the second room pretty pretty quickly. 
And this is where, if they were beat up and they were able to grab some of the stuff, they could e exit and uh, uh, you know get back to the their guild or their tavern rooms, rest for a few days to heal up, and then come back and continue. Right. So you're not always going to anticipate that they're actually going to survive the entire dungeon all at once. Right. They're going to they're going to uh, have to probably strategically come and go. Right. Based on first level a first level character. But there you have it. This is. And I'm going to call this uh, the Occult of the Green Maiden, right? And the Green Maiden was a ghostly figure in uh, um, Celtic lore that could appear as a ghostly maiden, but could also appear as a half-woman, half-gold. Uh, she's not necessarily evil, but I'm making, I'm making her the evil goddess in this. So there you have it, folks. That is the very first dungeon I've ever created in Dragon Slayer. Uh, I'll come back later and talk about um, this experience uh, in a different video. Thanks for watching. Good day.